Very good morning to you all. My name is Abraham Heifetz. I'm CEO of Chematria. And here in one slide, I want to show the problem with the pharmaceutical industry. So the amount of money that we spend on pharma R&D has more than tripled over the last 15 years to about $50 billion, while the number of drugs that we discover has plummeted. And that gap is unsustainable, and it's getting worse. So how do we get into this mess? Well, here if we look at a post-mortem done by GlaxoSmithKline, and we just multiply together their measured, their reported success rates for the different phases of drug discovery, then we find that the overall success rate is less than one-fifth of one percent of projects. Okay, so why does that happen? And here I want to make an analogy uh, or to, to all other kinds of manufacturing that happens. And in fact, uh, I want to talk about a, a contrast versus what we do. For every other piece of manufacturing, whether it's, it's every car that BMW makes or every airplane that, that Boeing designs, they're all built inside of a computer before it's ever built in the real world. But not pharmaceuticals. With pharmaceuticals, we physically construct every single prototype and physically test every single prototype. And here we're talking about literally millions of individual molecules put into millions of individual test tubes, which cost, of course, millions of individual dollars. Right? And what you want to be able to do is to replace those test tubes with software in the same way that other kinds of manufacturing have, have managed to do. And so that's what Kimatria does. So we write software to make this process much more efficient. Because in every human endeavor, there's a point where data and statistics outpace human intuition. So I want to talk about why now is the right time to do this, why we can do it today in a way that we couldn't do it in the past. Uh, and one of the key differences is that we have far more computation available today than we ever had before. So Kamatri is using the number one supercomputer in Canada to do our work. And just to give you a, an idea of the scope of this computation, if we were to buy this amount of computing power on uh, Amazon's Elastic Compute Cloud today, it would cost $8 million. That much computation allows us to process far, far larger data sets than it's ever been possible before. And with more computation and more data, we can build much better statistical models, and better statistical models yield better accuracy. So where our technology has the same uh, price and speed benefits as existing software solutions, we become much more accurate in our predictions, and we cross, you know, to a point of, of use, being usefully accurate. And let me quantify that for you. Uh, on a standard, industry standard benchmark that comes out of UCSF, uh, if we put successes, you have to get 70% correct, 0.7 uh, AUC on the rock curves, and I won't go into the details. Uh, we get 60 of the 100 uh, test cases correct, whereas leading competitors get 20. And that's competitors who have been building their software for decades and eking out all the performance that they can, our prototype gets 60% right. Uh, because we're a brain institute, I decided to throw some science here so we could deep dive deeply if we want in the uh, Q&A, but uh, here's the, the backing behind that claim. But what I was talking about here, of course, was uh, retrospective with benchmarks with retrospective data, and here I, I wanna tell you about a prospective validation that we have. It's running uh, at KMH with uh, our collaborator, Dr. Fang Lu and, and Dr. Albert Wong. And here, what we're doing is they're looking for uh, multiple sclerosis uh, drugs. And so what we started there was we took 8.2 million molecules, pared them down to a subset which is appropriate for the brain, and then computationally predicted which molecules were gonna be the ones that were most likely to succeed. And so these guys are gonna start injecting them into rats pretty soon. Um, and so w when you do this computationally with 8.2 million molecules, you can cover much broader chemical space than would be feasible with actual physical uh, molecules. And the experiments that you choose to run are not only limited in scope and therefore cost, but you have a higher success rate because you've, you've judiciously chosen rather than randomly sampled the space. We're a company, so how do we envision making money going forward? The idea here is that um, although it's, it's great to uh, discover gold yourself, it's often better to 
uh, sell pickaxes to people who want to uh, discover it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, enter into risk sharing schemes with our customers. And so what this looks like is uh, we charge small upfront payments uh, to run the predictions. And then as the molecules that we've predicted do well for our customers, we'll get milestone payments and so we'll do well too. And so here, uh, the average exit, usually these companies exit without having a molecule. The average exit is something like $156 million. And so even a 1% uh, revenue sharing scheme on that is a million dollars of, of revenue. Um, my co-founder and myself, I just want to say a word about uh, our backgrounds. So he uh, comes from a pharma, small pharma startup uh, and has done drug discovery algorithms before. Um, I did high performance computing at IBM's TJ Watson Research Labs. And so this is, you can see really is a marriage of these two ideas. And we met five years ago in the PhD perms at, at U of T doing computational biology. Thank you.